2013's Alejandro Guzman is in the North Sound, where last night's snow knocked out power for thousands. And Chief Meteorologist Lisa Villegas is tracking every development when it comes to this incoming weather system. We'll hear from both of them in just a minute. First, let's go to Zach Anders reporting live in Bonnie Lake, where the snow has been coming down hard for hours. So, Zach, what are the conditions like right now? Well, it's cleared up quite a bit. The uh, snow that we were seeing earlier that was falling was light and it's warmed up a little bit. So the roads are looking slushy right here in Bonnie Lake. It is clear and wet. Some of the drivers that we spoke to earlier in their commute on I-5 said, you know, it could be a lot worse. It's not too bad to drive in. Um, I wouldn't mind if we got six or eight inches, honestly. Um, I love it. I think it's really magical. It's getting me in the mood for Christmas. Um, yeah, I, I think it really sets the mood for everything to come for the holidays. Of course, this was affecting everyone differently. The snow hitting some pockets a little bit harder and others getting spared. SR 18, we just learned, has reopened after it was closed for a few hours. And the northbound lanes south of uh, Tumwater, south of Olympia on I-5 are still, according to WashDOT, closed for collisions there. We're tracking those throughout the night. Back to you guys. All right, well, looking at the current temperatures around Washington tonight, the cold is setting in. In Bothell, it is another cold night. And for some, they don't have the power to keep warm. And that's where we find Fox 13 News reporter Alejandro Guzman joining us live tonight. Ali, it seems like that snow has calmed down there for a bit, but that's not the end of the story for people in that area. What's it like there tonight? Yeah, David, Jamie, I can tell you that the roads are pretty much clear. Everything is a smooth sailing here, but now there's another issue that we're talking about cleanup efforts. But along with that, so many people here can't even do that just yet because they've been going on 18 hours and counting without power, at least here in some neighborhoods that we've driven past. It's pitch black out here. People inside their homes are trying to light themselves with candles and flashlights. We know that their power went out around 1030 last night after trees and after the windstorm was actually very strong in the area and the snowstorm weighing heavy on those trees uh, causing those power lines to start coming down now. There are some folks who are feeling a little warmer now that some of them at least 900 or so of them are back on with some lights. They're saying that they're now starting to heat up a little bit. If you'll take a look at video from earlier today, you can see just how dark it really was as folks came out to the grocery store for non-perishables because even here at the QFC, there was no eggs, there was no dairy, there was no meat. Crews said in this case, like many others, it was those trees to blame for the blackout as they grew heavy with snow. This specific crew you're taking a look right here, they were called in this morning from Redmond to help with the more than 9,000 folks caught in the dark following the storm overnight. Now, they know thousands of you are still without power and they want, you guys want to know when the power will be restored. And while they say the answer is not so cut and dry, there's no specific timeline. They are out here working and we've seen them drive past us and make sure that everything is fully functioning after some folks got the power back on. But they say they now need your help in case you do see them out here. Take a listen. Be mindful, be, you know, be patient for your power, but also be patient on the roads. You know, don't put our life in danger when you're driving by and speeding by us and stuff. That super appreciative. Just slow her down. You know, we don't want to be thinking about getting hit by a car when we're out up there messing around with power. And those are some warning signs just from them. They say that many folks are while the lights are on here, that crew was now headed on to another outage to fix that issue there. They say they're going to be working about 40 hours and then resting possibly eight until everyone, you know, has their lights back on. They also say they have additional crews working to and yet they're also preparing for what could be another possible round of snow and overnight cold temperatures and they're preparing for that, making sure that they're working around the clock as well. Now we have heard from folks here, like I mentioned, the grocery store here was barely keeping the lights on with a generator. Many folks are now stocking up and cleaning up efforts that are now being dealt with inside the home. We're talking about the refrigerator, but how are they preparing exactly? Well, you're going to hear from some folks coming up in the next 30 minutes. We'll see you then.
All right, Alejandra, and looking at the power outages across the state, nearly 17,000 people sitting in the dark. More than 15,000 of those are in Snohomish and King County. We'll keep you updated as they continue to work on those power lines, try to get the juice back on. We'll have the latest. Let's bring in the expert now, Fox 13 Chief Meteorologist Lisa Viegas. And Lisa, this is not what we're used to seeing. No, not at all. In fact, those temperatures, by the way, will continue to fall into the 20s overnight. So even if you're not going to experience another run of snow, which a lot of us are, you're going to be dealing with some icy pockets, at least some black ice as well. So please take it easy on the roads there. We are quiet right now. That first round of snow has just withered away, but we are going to get ready for round number two. This is going to happen after midnight, so mainly affecting my early morning commuters. That second round, by the way, happening right along the coast over to Nia Bay and Forks, starting to see some of that snow trickle in for you along the Olympic Peninsula. You're going to be the first to see that, and then the south. Sound. So because of this next round, which will take place throughout the morning, we have a winter weather advisory in place. Most of us are going to see around one to three inches. Isolated areas are going to see four to five, especially in the foothills. Those higher elevations like the Cascades and the Olympics, that's where we're expecting an additional five to eight. Might not seem like a lot just compared to what we have seen over the last few days. But again, it is going to impact our roadways, especially because of the timing happening early tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. So as we fast forward by tomorrow, there it is, that next snow ban again impacting now those across the South Sound where we didn't see a whole lot of snow accumulating from uh, yesterday's event. So that's going to take place from Centralia, Olympia, all the way to Tacoma. That's going to continue to lift up towards the north, now impacting parts of the Central Sound, like King and Snohomish County, as temperatures fall into the 20s for a lot of us, freezing for most of us. We'll talk about tomorrow afternoon, though. Coming up. Another consequence of the heavy snow is the danger it creates on our roads. Tonight, more of the same with sleet, slush, and snow all making things dicey for drivers. In Snohomish County, this driver hit some slush on State Route 2. Marysville Chief of Poli Police Eric Scarpin says the car lost control in the slush and crashed into a semi. No word on the conditions of those involved in the crash. Sheriff's deputies in Snohomish County said they stopped this car because the driver didn't clear the snow off their windshield. That driver was given a warning. Make sure that your windshield is fully free of snow before you drive away.